Hey everybody, welcome back to the 300ZX Turbo Project here in Glen's Garage. Now, today's video, we're going to be dealing with the ball joints. And as we go forward, you'll see the, the brakes are off, the struts are already out, and the sway bars are all disconnected already. So that's the point where we're going to pick up on this video. We're going to remove the lower control arm press the old ball joint out, press a new one in, and get the control arm back in. If you want to see the other stuff, there are separate videos for all of that that cover you know, the brake removal and the strut removal. So let's get on, get those ball joints replaced. Okay, so I'm going to try and get the steering knuckle separated from the ball joint here so we can get this control arm out. Um, I do have a pickle fork I can use. But I just got this new puller just off Amazon, so I thought I would give it a try. Um, it's a two and three jaw. I've currently got it set up as three jaw. Um, so let's see if it'll work. Okay, so it cut out the 20 minutes of me messing around trying to get this thing off. The puller ultimately didn't seem to want to work for me. Um, so I ended up using the pickle fork and I have just just freed it now so I can move that out of the way but we're now just going to tackle the bolt that holds the control arm in there and that is a you need 22 mil socket and a wrench it's kind of tight at this end with the steering rack so you got to put a wrench on that end All right, couldn't get the impact in there properly. Not enough room, so I'll just do it the old fashioned way with a spanner, a wrench, and a socket. Okay. All right, there it is, finally out. Now, that should have been the easy part. Now the struggle to get this ball joint out of here get it all cleaned up all right so control arms out um that was a good hour of my life i won't get back struggling with that that was my first stupid car moment um but anyway moving on the there's a big circlip here that holds the ball joint in so the ball joint gets pushed out that way and when it gets when the new one gets put in you put this circlip on so we're going to release that first and then we're going to try pressing it out and we'll see how that's going to work. Hey, so I've got the sear clip off, giving it a quick clean up here because it was just greasy and I was tired of getting grease on everything I touched. Um, so we're ready to try and press this out now. Um, I have one of these press tools. This is actually a rental. I don't actually own this, so I've just gone out and rented it. So we're going to have a go with this and see if creatively we can get that pushed out of there and the new one in. Okay, so this is the setup I'm trying. Got the fitting here. Got the, the end with the whole end. It goes over the, the ball joint spindle, if you will. And then I got a tube here, which is where the ball joint should drop into. And then there's a fitting. And then obviously this fitting on the end here where the screw goes into. So we're going to try that. This should push it out. All right, so I did have to use the big breaker bar, but this is working now. It has, there we are, I think it's through. I was just turning away there, boring video, so I didn't bother, but I do believe this set up has pressed the, the ball joint out, which is excellent. All right, so there's the ball joint out. Um, not that particularly rusty, just a good tight fit, I guess, in there. Um, so yeah, I've given that bore in there, a light sand. Um, we're just going to do a little more cleanup here. I just, I'm amazed still. I mean, I look at this, this is a 37-year-old Canadian lower control arm. With over 100,000 miles on it and this is no rust. It's... Anyway, we're going to pretty it up just a little bit more. We'll give it a quick scuff in the sand 
and get it ready and then we'll press the other ball joint in. Okay, so I've cleaned everything up there. I've placed the new ball joint in, positioned it as square as I can get it. Um, I put a tiny little smear of uh, anti-seize, copper anti-seize around the flange to help put it, putting it in and maybe help it not corrode when it's sitting in there 20 or 30 years from now if we're lucky. And so I've got a sleeve here so the ball joint can push up in, fitting at the top. And then this is going to be the one that pushes at the bottom here and we'll see if we can press that in. So it is pressed in. So we put the circlip on now. Um, I will say you have to be pretty careful how square it's going in. It will start to go in not square, or at least mine did. So I had to back it out once and then push it in again. And effectively I had to sort of shift it so it would push slightly this way because it kept wanting to push it that way. So anyway, it is in, it's square, it's tight. So we're good now, but just one of the little problems I found there. Okay, so circlips fitted back in. Um, you're going to want a tool like this to go in and expand that circlip. Ideally, rather than messing around with needle nose or vice grips or something that's the ideal way to do it without any damage okay so time to get the control arm with the new ball joint in and everything all ready here into the car bolt through and tightened up All right, so we're just gonna bring the control arm up. We'll get this knuckle on here and then just loosely put on with the castle bolt so it's in place and then we'll torque this fastener down. So Nissan specify between, I think, 69 and 83 pounds-feet of torque for that bolt. Uh, they put a range on all the bolts. Um, I'm gonna aim for about 80, so I'm gonna set my torque wrench to 80, snug that down. And then we'll get this castle bolt tightened up and the split pin or cotter pin. We'll get that set through there. I'm not going to be attaching this uh, lateral rod um, yet or putting on the sway bar or anything like that yet because I want the control arm to be able to drop down and put the strut in. So the next step will be putting the strut in and then we'll start putting these components to the control arm. Now, ball joint is installed, control arm is back in the car, steering knuckle is attached, everything's ready there, just start putting the strap back in. I have read that you can remove the ball joint in situ in the car, take the strut out and work on it while it remains attached in the car. I think it would be tricky, but I guess that would be your choice. Me personally, for the few bolts that have to come out, I'd get it out and work on the bench. Um, but either way, that's how you replace a ball joint on a 300ZX. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in to the Turbo Project. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you're enjoying the series, a like, subscribe would be awesome for the channel. Very much appreciated. And as always, everybody, drive safely out there.